Hi there. In this video I want to talk about access subforms. In a previous video we talked about the relationships in the access between tables and subforms make use of these relationships or other ones that you create on the fly in order to link different types of data together such as authors and books or books and checkouts. In this example we're going to build a quick set of forms that will enable us to see the books in the system and all the times they've been checked out. And it's going to use this relationship, this one-to-many relationship between the two tables. So let me go ahead and create a new form. Let's go to Create and Form Design. And it brings up that blank form. Now this is going to be kind of a simple no frills example so I'm not going to put a lot of detail on the form but let me just bring up the properties menu here just double click on that gray area where you can right click and choose form properties on the form itself I'm going to set the record source I'll go ahead and click the little ellipsis button here and that brings up the query builder I'm just going to go over here to the tables and select TBL books drag that over there now normally I would not base a form like this directly on the tables I'd probably build a query to go between them but again this is a simple example I'll just select all fields by double clicking on the title bar there and drag them down to the query you could also set criteria here to limit the books that are returned, but I'll just go ahead and select them all. I'll go ahead and click close. And yes, I want to save it. So that will make all the fields from the books table available to this form. So I'm going to click on design and add existing fields. Then I'm just going to drag some of these fields down here so that we can have a basic form that will display the books. Let's start with book title and I'm just going to take a couple minutes to arrange these into some readable order. Okay, so I have the fields laid out in a pretty decent order and if I look at the form here in form view I see that I probably don't need the ISBN number but what I actually do need is the author's name right now it's showing a number that corresponds to the record for that author but I actually need the name so I'll go back into design view and get rid of that field and then I'll expand the author field right click change to combo box double click it to get to the properties I'll click on the data tab and I'm going to change the row source of that field as well I'm going to select the authors table just double click on that select the author ID and then since the last name and the first name are split up I'm going to create a new field here that combines the two and I'll call that author name and I'll just type in the field names surrounded by brackets. So what that does, it references those fields. It takes the last name and the first name and it concatenates them with the ampersand character and puts a comma between them. So it shows the last name first. Let's take a look at that query real quick. And you can see that it shows the author ID, which is already showing on the form, plus the author name. So that will work. Go ahead and close that. Yes, I want to save it. Now under the bound column property, I'm going to leave that as one because it's the first column, the author ID, that's actually bound to that control. I'm going to say yes, limit to list. And then under the format tab, I'm going to select two for the column count because there were two columns in that query. And then I'm going to put zero inches, comma, 1.5 inches for the column widths. And when I open up the 
form in form view, you can see that it shows the author's name. And if I click on that down arrow, it would actually let me choose another author if the correct author isn't already in there. So what that's done is to set the author ID field to zero inches. It's not even showing it, and it's just showing the author's name. But it still saves the author ID value back to the table. So it maintains that relationship. So let's go back into design view, take a look at a few more properties that you saw in a previous video. I'm going to click on all so I can just go through them really easy. And again, click on the form itself. I'm going to change this to books for the caption. I want the default value to be single form. I want the user to page through the books by going from one record to the next. I'm going to say data sheet view no and no to layout view as well. I'm going to leave the border style as sizable and I'm going to take out the record selectors. Again, these are the record selectors right here. These, this vertical bar on the left of the form it allows you to select the entire record. I generally don't use those, but you can if you want. So I will select no. I'm going to leave the navigation buttons on. I don't need any scroll bars for this one and everything else looks pretty good for now. So let's go ahead and click on form view and I can resize that. And let's just change the back color slightly. Design, click on the background and I'm going to select something to keep it from being solid white. Let's just make that kind of a light blue. Click on view. Okay, so now we have our basic books form. Now I need a subform that's going to show all the times that this book has been checked out and also when it's been checked in. So I need to see how popular this book is. So I'm going back into design view. I'll come up here to the design tab in the main menu and select sub form or sub report. And I'm going to just draw that on the form, make it about as wide as the rest of the content. Now this brings up the subform wizard and you have a couple of options here. You can actually use an existing form if you want to create a subform separately, or you can just use the tables and queries that are available. So I'm going to go ahead with that first option, use the existing tables and queries, click next. And I'm going to select the checkouts table, TBL checkouts. I'm going to make all fields available. It has the checkout ID, customer book, and checkout dates and so on. So I'm going to select all of them by using this double arrow. Click next. Now what it does here, it offers suggestions for the relationships that you can use to link these two forms. So this first one says show TBL checkouts for each record in, and it's referring to the SQL statement that I entered into the record source for the form. And it goes off the screen here, but it says using book ID. So I'm going to try that one. Or you can click on define my own if you really want to be sure about it. And I could select book ID for this one, and then book ID under the checkouts table. So that actually shows the same relationship that the other screen showed but at least we can see the whole thing. So I'll go ahead and click next and I'm going to call this sub checkouts. Click on finish. So that's set up the new sub form and let's just take a quick look at how it looks initially. And what it's done is to actually set that as a data sheet within the form. So it shows I got the collection of records from the checkouts table for that book. And as you can see, it has five different checkouts and it shows the book ID there. And if I was to page through the book records, you can see how those 
records change. It shows the relevant checkouts for the book. Now, this isn't very user friendly right now, so let's go ahead and make some changes to it and click Design View. Now, in Design View, it's actually showing it as a form. And what you can do is come over here to the property sheet for the subform. I'm actually clicking on the, the subform object right here. And you can change the default view. So if I was to change this to say continuous forms and go ahead and go back into form view, you can see it, it changed the way that the data is viewed. But I want to leave it as a data sheet. So I will change that to the data sheet. Again, click on the subform object. And you can also right click on this and select subform in new window. And it will actually put it into a new window that you can work with maybe a little bit easier. So again, I'm clicking on the form object itself and I'm going to change that back to data sheet. I'm going to say no to form view, no to layout view, and just allow the data sheet view. And that can always be changed back if you want to. And since it's going to be a data sheet, there aren't too many other properties here that I need to change. I'll turn off record selectors. I generally turn those off. I'll leave both scroll bars on because the data might exceed the width of the subform. And for the rest of it, it seems pretty good. So let's go ahead and close that. I'm closing the subform. Let me expand it just a little bit. Let's go ahead and click View. Okay, still some change to be made because that's not quite what I want the user to see. So let's start by eliminating some of these fields. Don't need the checkout ID. That means nothing to the user, so it doesn't really need to be there. The book ID isn't really relevant either. It just points to this book. So let's remove those. And I'm going to want to keep the checkout date and the due date, or at least the checked in date. Probably don't need the due date. Not for this one anyway. So let's just get rid of the checkout ID. The data is still there behind the form. It's just not being displayed. So you can remove any of these fields that you want and the book ID goes away, removing the due date. So now we just have those three fields and the customer ID is showing the actual ID number which as I, as I showed you with the author ID isn't really useful. So I'm going to show you that procedure once more and it's something that you'll be using probably quite a bit as you go through access, creating combo fields and referencing various fields and various values. So let's change this to a combo box. Let's get the data. We'll go to data, row source, customers. And you might not even want to show the customer depending on your application. For this form, you probably do, but in some cases you could leave the customer out. So again, we want the customer ID and I'm going to create that new field with the last name and the first name. And let's view that query and you can see that it shows the data that we want. So I'll close that and again, Limit to list, yes. Go to format. Column count is two. There were two columns in that query. Column widths, zero and 1.5. You don't even have to put in the inches sign there. You can change the list rows. You can change the number of rows that it shows. I'll put as, that as eight. And let's expand the field. Go to view. That's a little bit better, not showing that quite in the order that we want. Let's again design view and let's change the order of these fields. That should be fine. The width of these fields is not going to affect the width of the fields when it's in datasheet view, just so you know. 
that's something you might have to play with. Now, I probably want this sorted by a specific field. So I'm going to go back to the data tab and I'm going to reopen that record source query. I'm going to select checked in date or I'm going to use checkout and checkout date instead because checked in date might be blank. So I'm going to sort that descending. So I want to, I want to see that in the descending order. I want to see the last time the book was checked out first. Close that. Go back to the view and you can see that's showing it in descending order. So that's a bit better. Let's make a few more changes. Let's go back to design view and I'm going to set both of these date fields as as short dates because I really don't need to see the time they were checked in. So I'll come over here to format and select under format the short date option. So that's just going to show the date itself. And then I'm going to clean up the actual names of the fields. Go ahead and right click on those and size to fit. And then I'm going to take the entire form content and I'm going to move it over just a little bit, resize the subform to show a little bit more. Go ahead and go into form view. That's a little bit better. You can always double click on these field borders to change the width of the fields. That's a basic subform and let me go ahead and change the name of it. Design sub checkouts. That should be just be checkouts. So that's a basic sub form. You, you have each book and all the times it's been checked out. And again, if I page through these books, you can see the activity for each book. Looks like some checked in dates were not put in there. And it's a handy little form. Instead of having to look through the different tables, you have both tables right here. And there are a number of things that you can do with the fields. You can sort by them. You can click the little down arrows and sort, or you can apply filters. You can actually hide and unhide fields if you want. You can freeze them in place. And if you want to change that field width so that it comes up the same each time, you can right click on a field and choose field width and you can actually set the column width in pixels. Let's go ahead and change this to 25. So that shortened the field a little bit and that's supposed to actually save the width, but sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. You might have to play around with it a bit, but that's basic subforms in Microsoft Access. And as with any form, there are a lot of customizations that you can apply. You can use them in different ways depending on your situation. It's, it's something that you'll see quite frequently in Access, so it's a good thing to get familiar with. In one of the upcoming videos, I'll take a look at sub-reports, where you can do pretty much the same thing on printed reports. So stay tuned.